Hey YouTube, we're here at the regional here in Las Vegas and I'm here with a first place deck profile. What was your name? My name is Alejandro, better known as Alex. And what deck were you playing today? I was playing Mermail Undying. Okay, and uh, with the release of things like Shut All and like Burning Abyss, what made you decide to play Mermail? I just believe that I was going to outpace them because uh, Shadow and stuff like that take a long time to set up. And I know something like Dante, um, he's real quick, he's real fast, like he's usually turn one. But the problem is like he, you bring out something that's 2700 attacks such as uh, uh, Leo, Master of Blades, it's, that hurts that deck so much. And then I'll just show you my build as far as like how I thought I was going to outpace most of, the, most of the deck. So, alright. Here we go. First, three Undyne's because that's pretty much the heart of the deck. It searches you and activates a lot of effects such as Marksman. Um, it can get you your title in the grave when you need it. And uh, just Dragoons. Just, it, especially it was key versus uh, every time people would uh, side deck Vanities fiend against me and then I would just summon Undyne and then just throw uh, an infantry and then it would just destroy it and I'd get over it and then I'd just summon big monsters um, so that's these then there's more search power with Pike I'm sure if you played Mermos you know what these guys do pretty much the Stratos a lot of effects activate through him as well and so the concept was pretty much uh, attack them and just hit a lot of back rows because something like Burning Abyss, it took, like, they don't like using the Karma Cuts on something like this after the effect resolved and you get the plus or Phoenix and Wind Blast, they won't put him back up top. So stuff like this kept working and you just put so much pressure on them to activate their cards early so that you can win the late game. And with those, with Pike, you wind up getting the Marksman that kind of became the heart of the deck because... He is just popping back rows like crazy, and it puts the pressure. This is what puts, it'll force the Vanity's Emptiness to come out a lot earlier than they want to. Um, you can also get the Gundy. The Gundy brings out all the rank sevens. So it definitely, that's how you establish the big boards that they can't get over. A lot of times I would end up with three or four monsters by turn one. So, and then Lindy does, does the same thing except she has a sphere, the end phase plays. Like people forget that mermails are pretty good. They don't get touched in the bat list anymore. So um, that's why for sure that I decided to play it. But then the heart, the big guys, we have the triple bestius, which searches you the mermail cards in there, level four or lower. And he will help you trigger effects with like marksman and infantry. And then I decided to play triple megalo because I wanted to be very aggressive and put pressure on them real early so that there was no late game. And a lot of times I would win by turn two or three because I played the triple, he gets me the spear that winds up getting me the Lindy and the whole engine starts. And then of course, title. Title gives you so many axes, especially against um, Shadows. All you do is you just bring out the title and you do not go into your extra deck. You just start attacking with them. And then um, you just put so much pressure on them and then they can't just Activate Shadow Fusion. So they have uh, some dead cards. And then there's spells. Two salvages. Because of course it gets you the monsters that are 1500 or less, which you don't really get the Lindy, but you do get the Gundy, the Marksman, and the Infantry. Oh, looks like the Infantries are not in here. Okay, well, the Infantries are in here somewhere. And you know, we're still on monsters. Get you two infantries. I also forgot to add that I do play dragoons and two aqua spirits. Sorry about that. And the reason I play the aqua spirits, like I said, it's all about pressure. You wind up going real early with the with uh, an abyss dweller or something like that, especially against burning abyss. It's a uh, really good. Um, this actually helped me make a. a an, ex an Exiton Knight and definitely made allowed me to come back in that game. And so it gives you those kind of plays and of course at Salvage I was explaining as to how you can recycle a lot of the stuff so you can put pressure and destroy monsters and, and back rows. Soul Charge was not really that good. I usually cited it out or cut it out. It's not searchable, you can't attack and it you can't really be as aggressive as I want to be. So 
I would not play Soul Charge. It's just, it's not a good card right now. Um, double MST. I would switch these for Night Beams. Night Beams are really, really good. Goes against um, the Shadow Games. I was I was MSTing just so I can put pressure, but if I had Night Beam, they they don't get their effects. It's um, also against Burning Abyss, Night Beam, which is in my side deck. I'll show you that later. And then I decided to um, obviously the meta compulsory device. It hurts pretty much every exceed. Um, that's also why I added the Wing Blast at three because you can activate Gundy, you pitch Gundy, and they can get you a Megalo or something like that. And you often have a Genix controller, an Undyne. There's cards sometimes that you don't want in your hand or a title in your hand. I mean, there's just cards you don't want to see in your hand. And Triple Wing Blast, I think, I play this over Allure because Allure is much more situational. And Wing Blast, you can just dump water monsters and get them back with Salvage. And then, of course, it was the Triple Abyss Sphere, End Phase, Lindy. You get started, put so much pressure on them. Um, Vanity's Emptiness, it's a clutch card. You flip it on pretty much any people don't really play MSTs in the main deck so this card gives you such an advantage especially when you have something like Leo and Vanity's Emptiness you pretty much win they can't get rid of that so that happened very often and then to get real big fields I sometimes had to rely on the Squall because Squall happened to be one of those cards that like how, how did you do the extra deck real quick? Okay, extra deck was, I guess we gotta go real quick. Abyss Dwellers at two because um, of the meta. It definitely hurts Shadows and, and it hurts Burning Abyss. Uh, it actually, in my last match, I had a Mermail Mirror match. Abyss Dwellers clutch. A Forgotten Combo is definitely Bahamut Shark and Abyss Strike. This, there's not a lot of uh, monsters that can get over. Uh, a Bahamut Shark attack and then in Abyss Strike in defense mode you wind up getting her effect when uh, she dies goes to the grave and then you recycle um, what other everything else is like level 7 yeah, I mean everything right. else is pretty generic right. I mean Big Eye double Gaios I went double Draco I probably shouldn't have I probably could have cut one but Draco's really good and I probably should have played two Master of Blades because that people target and I saw how much you know trouble Leo gave them yep. so Master of Blades really good um, no, uh, just, just because you need the arc. Yeah. Um, exit on night. And then Levier. I went Levier because when you have three, sometimes you uh, remove you remove stuff with the title. So Levier, it, it creates a lot of damage. Leo, Clutch. Yeah. I should probably play two of them. It's so good. And then, of course, Gun Gear. That it won me at least three games also because you go with whatever four and then you have the controller. Go him, pitch two. It's just he does way too many combos, especially with the title engraved. And then on to my side, Light and Prison Mirrors, Course of Tellers, some more Sateller Hate, Catastrophe. I already have all the stuff that puts so much pressure. You know, Sateller was the one deck that I was like, I know that it can stop a lot of my cards. Yeah. So this also is uh, Burning Abyss uh, because they play the Monarch sometimes. Um, this is just any other troll deck that likes to set a lot of back rows. I played actually Gravekeepers round one. I Catastrophe, I won. Uh, Chain of Superiors, um, mainly for Burning Abyss. It hurts them. Um, I played one Vanity Fiend, just for Shadows, but I saw a lot of people actually main breakthrough skills, so I'd, I would not side it as much. And then definitely my clutch cards was gonna be Triple Night Beam and MST. When you play two MSTs, Marksman, and then you side in a Typhoon and three Night Beams, forget about it. Everything, you, your, all your combos go off. Maxi is not played as much, and they have to get lucky with a Veiler to stop a lot of the combos you're gonna go off with. Yeah, I just decided to play real aggressive because I know I played Burning Abyss before and it takes time, and besides Dante making its combos, they don't have anything that can really 